and we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. Did you have a glorious fourth? I had a quiet fourth, which made me very happy. Uh, and you? Uh, rather, uh, you know, typical, just read the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence and then watched some fireworks. Uh, but in order to uh, give you some good news, we have to go overseas. <laughs> Germany's parliament voted to open marriage to gay couples. Uh, and we have a lot of other international news, but here at home, the How High Court of Texas unanimously ignored the U.S. Supreme Court and ruled that it may be okay to deny equal benefits to same-sex married couples. There are nuances <sighs> yes, to this. Yes, Stay there tuned. Are. Yes, there are. The, uh, the United States military has now officially delayed admission of transgender people into the service by six months. Trump, you've heard of him, some people won't say his name, but we have to identify him, uh, nominated an adversary of civil rights protections to head the Department of Justice's Civil Rights Division. Among other offensive appointments. Yes. Uh, North Carolina's law allowing magistrates not to perform same-sex marriage, marriages has survived a legal challenge. Chuck Renslow, the mm. Chicago gay pioneer who founded International Mr. Leather and many, many more community institutions, has died at 87. And China has uh, cracked down on access to LGBT websites. I'm tempted to start with Larry Kramer's 4th of July message. Well, uh, you know, in the... If in you the, think the, we're cranky. In the spirit of Frederick <laughs> Douglass, who in 1854 gave his uh, famous uh, 4th of July speech, uh, here's what Larry Kramer had to say to his gay brothers and sisters. On Facebook, happy 4th of July. We have no independence to celebrate. We are not free. We're being murdered again. Almost every post in Trump's cabinet is now held by someone who hates us. This new Supreme Court justice will eat us alive. The recent gay pride marches in Washington were embarrassing. Even the New York Times didn't write about our march of over two million people in New York City the largest gay pride march this city's ever had. Actually, they did in the sports section, but that's a, a footnote. It's looking like Trump's going to be around a while. Uh, he's getting away with anything and everything. He and his government want us dead. We are lined up in front of a firing squad and we are not all fighting back. Where are we? Well, that's Larry is, uh, you know, trying to be a catalyst again to get us moving. And I do think about that sometimes. We do go about a lot of things in our daily lives while the republic is crumbling all around us. Well, let's spend the next uh, <laughs> almost an hour talking about where we are and what's going on and uh, what we are doing okay. and what we need to do. Well, but we could start with the president because he really has done some horrible things well, this last week. Well, including the fact that his Defense Department did de uh, delay by six months uh, the implementation of opening service to transgender members. Now, Existing transgender members have been allowed to stay, have been given services and things, but the, uh, the, the services are all saying, we need more time for this before we start admitting people uh, who are transgender from the get-go. Uh, the glass half full version of this is that the Army and the Air Force wanted two years delay before allowing new trans recruits. Uh, the General Mattis or Secretary of Defense Mattis is holding them to six months at the moment. Uh, I suppose that could always be extended. And there is someone in Congress, a Republican House member, who wants, who wanted to submit a bill to discharge all current trans members, well, let alone any new ones. And then there's the fact that, and I don't know how they're getting away with this, but um, uh, the Department of Veterans Affairs, which is, you know, Trump says he favors so much, um, is not paying for transition-related coverage in their health care plan. Yeah. And so nine states in the District of Columbia have filed suit, or filed an amicus brief in a suit, supporting trans veterans who are trying to get this care. 
And then there's the Justice Department. The oh. Justice Department has a really brilliant civil rights division. Ha, that well, has uh, done, uh, sometimes. <laughs> ha, uh, yeah, let me finish the thought. They have done wonderful stuff over the years. Vanita Gupta, who was the previous uh, administrator of the yes. uh, department or the division, uh, we've shown her on the air being yes. so eloquent in support of uh, trans people and their rights. What I meant to say is in Democratic administrations, because past Republican administrations have done what Trump has done and pointed people who were hostile to civil rights. I remember Stan Pottinger, who was uh, doing good things I, in I, I, uh, I remember Republican Ronald administrations. Reagan, Ronald Reagan appointed a guy who went before the committee and he had to resign from his all-male country club in order, you know, to take the job, that kind of stuff. I mean, they were not people who who had great civil rights records. Uh, all right. That's all. Well, the point is, all of that was not as bad as this new <laughs> this is true. version. Eric Dryband, D-R-E-I-B-A-N-D, uh, is a famous anti-trans, anti-coverage for contraception, right. uh, because you get a religious exemption, anti-equal pay for women. Well, what has he done to distinguish himself? He's made a <laughs> career defending corporations who are fighting off discrimination suits. Yeah. So he knows a lot about it. <laughs> <laughs> so he is now going to be running the Civil Rights Division. It's very much like Scott Pruitt at the Environmental Protection Agency going there to destroy any kind of environmental protection. It's like uh, Betsy DeVos yes. destroying public education as the head of the education department. And the Defense Department starting World War III with Korea. And <laughs> uh, well, similarly, and, yes. the US uh, uh, AID Office of Gender Equality and Women's Empowerment. Well, USAID is the uh, US Agency for International Development. Will now be run by Bethany Cosma, also a bigot and uh, well, opponent of equal rights. Just last year. She launched a campaign to oppose the Obama administration's guidance to public schools that said transgender students have the right to use the facilities that line up with their gender just last year. So she has been rewarded for this with the uh, heading this Office of Gender Equality and Women's Empowerment. It's, it's backwards world in the Trump administration. Bizarro world, as yes. they say, yes. And just as a small footnote, we've been telling you uh, that we were pleased that the Department of Justice and other departments were going ahead with pride celebrations run by their LGBTQ employees, uh, and particularly the Justice Department doing one where they were going to honor Gavin Grimm. Uh, and they did that, but they closed it to press and kicked out the Washington Blades' Chris Johnson, who has attended these ceremonies for many years. Well, Gavin Grimm gave a great quote to the Associated Press. He said, given that today's administration is largely hostile to LGBT people and especially dangerous to LGBT youth, the gravity of receiving an award from DOJ, Department of Justice itself, specifically the Pride Alliance within it, is not lost on me at all. Not Gavin. Oh, and Gavin's uh, uh, case is now going to be heard by the Fourth Circuit on September 11th, oral arguments in Virginia. Uh, you remember he was bringing his case. We were waiting for the Supreme Court to take it. But then when the Trump administration overturned the transgender guidelines, his case no longer became relevant to the Supreme Court. They had to go back and start again at the Fourth Circuit, so that's what they're going to do in September. Well, in the uh, private sector, um, the uh, I was I read that the National Education Association gave their Virginia Uribe Award for Creative Leadership in Human Rights. So they've named it for a big lesbian activist in the school system to Jim Obergefell. They did that in Boston. Well, yeah. Randy Weingartner, Weingarten runs the NEA. No, she run, no, she runs the United Federation of You're Teachers. You're correct. Oh, all right. My mistake. It's all right. I just saw Randy the other day, and well, she so was in the Pride I. Parade. Yes, I saw with her Sharon too. Kleinbaum, her partner. Uh, and as long as I'm on corrections, uh, oh, I, have I some also. Too. <laughs> well, uh, I said we showed footage of a gay men's chorus performing at a Pride event in Knoxville, Tennessee but neglected to point out that it was the Washington, D.C. gay men's chorus. They were surrounding yes. and singing to some bigots with yes. signs. And I was, I was uh, so stunned by Justin Trudeau's uh, rainbow socks 
that I called him Pierre Trudeau uh, <laughs> last week. <laughs> that seems a small problem. Okay. Uh, now, uh, before we leave the Trump administration, can we, discuss, Trump stories, yeah. can we discuss uh, Chris Matthews' uh, oh, compilation sure. of 20 years of Trump interviews? He did the, this was MSNBC did special shows for the 4th of July so everybody could have the day off. <laughs> And uh, he, he did an hour compilation of his interviews over 20 years with Trump. And I was struck uh, by how much smarter Trump looked 20 years ago. There was some of that. And how much he's aged. There, there was some of that. Uh, there was some of his, you know, typical behaviors and dodges and things like that and the way he spoke about uh, things. Always. Uh, but um, what, I was, what I was struck by was how Chris Matthews indulged this guy and gave him a lot of credibility as if he was a serious person. Uh, and Chris Matthews has been fawning over Tony Perkins for years and yes. a lot of other right-wing people. He just, he has no filter for any of this. Uh, well, occasionally he, he gets on his high horse, but uh, he, he lets a lot get by. Well, and this is how we got Trump. I mean, he, was, he is a media creation. But I was really, it was scary to see not that we haven't all aged, including <laughs> yes. particularly me, but uh, Trump has aged in scary ways. Well, uh, Chris was pressing him on whether you know he was going to run for president. He was always asking whether he was going to run for president. He says, he says, with what I've done with women, oh, I never, you know, I could never do it, you know, basically. <laughs> uh, well, okay, fine, big deal. The but to see Trump look together and smart. A monster, but t together and smart 20 years ago, and see what a mess he is now physically and mentally is uh, shocking, I thought. Yes, shocking. especially since uh, he was elected president of the United States. Exactly. <laughs> exactly <laughs> and we're my point. At war with North Korea. All right. That well, war never ended, by the way. Uh, there was an armistice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now or a ceasefire. Uh, uh, right. So we go to the states. Okay. Well, I mean, the, the the most shocking story of the week came out of Texas. Although, as Ann said, there are subtleties to this. Unanimously, the Texas Supreme Court and I should uh, eight nothing. And I should say that they are all elected statewide, so they're always looking over their shoulders at what's what the electorate is going to think of them. Can I give a little more background? Yes, first? even even more background. Okay. So uh, two right wing. Conservatives in Texas went to the Texas Supreme Court and said, uh, "We are uh, Christian heterosexual taxpayers, and we don't think the state should be paying uh, benefits to same-sex married couples because the Supreme Court decision legalizing same-sex marriage was unconstitutional." This is the issue of the day because and because we're allowed to get married, they have to let us get married, but they're arguing we don't have to give people equal benefits, especially if we don't have anti-discrimination laws. Well, and these guys wanted to go farther because they're arguing that even the marriages are unconstitutional, but whether that is or not, they want to certainly prevent Texas from giving any kind of benefit to same-sex married couples. Anywhere, so any city. So the court originally said, we're not taking this case. It's, it's done, forget it, we're abiding by the lower court that said, no, you're wrong, get out of here. And then there was such political pressure yes. in Texas from the governor, yes. from the lieutenant governor, yes. from all the politicians, that the Texas Supreme Court changed its mind and agreed to decide whether this case should go forward. And they had to really strain to find a legal argument because the, because the Supreme Court of the United States just ruled in the Arkansas case that you've got, that you've got as we said in or Obergefell, you have to treat these couples equally. They, you know, there's yes. language in there about that. So I read the Texas decision, and here's how they manipulated oh, yes, that. I know. They said... <laughs> Because the Supreme Court considered the Arkansas arguments about benefits, about the birth certificates, clearly there are unanswered questions here. And so these guys have more of a right to go back to court and make their arguments because their original arguments were, their original thing they brought was 
before Obergefell was originally announced, and therefore they haven't had their full day in court, and therefore the lower court should hear this. And by the way, Obergefell was the decision that said all states have to recognize have to uh, recognize same-sex marriages and allow same-sex couples to get married. But the Texas court also cited a, a, a Supreme Court non-decision, just the fact that they granted review to the Colorado Baker case uh, as you know as a basis for its argument in this decision. Now, you know, now I want to go, all right, so this is awful. Well, they're going to lose, uh, we would assume, we, at the, uh, we would assume. Now, uh, as the, the court is currently constituted. Well, I can't quite decide because the uh, LGBT legal organizations and others are, you know, hair on fire reaction to this. Well, about, a, um, the Texas well, court has said, raise money, you know, uh, all right. <laughs> yes, it is. And you should be aware of that. Uh, you know, the Texas court has said uh, that same-sex couples uh, should not get benefits equal to uh, opposite-sex married couples. And they didn't say that. What right. they did was uh, crack the door open for this uh, discussion to take place uh, under political pressure. Now, we told you all about the Arkansas case last week, and stay with us on this because this is very important in terms of how the court's going to unfold in the future. Um, you know, in the Arkansas decision, they said, no, you gotta, you got to give them the, the adoption benefits together. They're, 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 and the birth certificate, birth certificate. the, the names on the birth certificate. You've got to do that. But it was an unsigned opinion. There were three dissents, uh, the usual suspects. Gorsuch, Alito, Alito, and Thomas. Yes, but we don't know what Roberts did because it was an unsigned opinion. Yes. He could have gone with them but not signed on to their opinion. He could have uh, just sat on the sidelines. He could, so we don't know what he did. We gave him too much credit last week. That's right. And we, a viewer pointed out to us that, in fact, we don't know if he went along with the majority on the uh, unsigned opinion telling Arkansas they had to give equal benefits to same-sex married couples. We just don't know what he did. We did say on last week's show that he was extremely hostile to the Obergefell decision. Well, he's, he voted he's, against it. Well, not just voted against it, but yeah. he said this is made up out of whole cloth. Uh, so, there's nothing in the Constitution to, to uh, give, a, give gay couples this right. So when he didn't sign on to the dissent in the Arkansas case, we thought, oh, well, at least he's uh, approving of Obergefell's settled uh, precedent. But in fact, he was not heard from on this case. So and this is why sure. we're completely um, in trouble. I would watch my words. Uh, if uh, Kennedy leaves uh, the court, or any of, or Ruth Bader Ginsburg, or uh, Breyer at this point, or Sotomayor, or, uh, Kagan. or Kagan, you know, if if any of those leave, uh, we are in big, 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 big trouble for the rest of our lives, anyway. <laughs> uh, well, uh, because I, well, was it in the Times I was reading this week about the aggressive nature of Gorsuch's yes. uh, approach that he's Nasty. not waiting he, for to settle in, he's just boom, uh, punching through very fast. And that's what we talked about a lot last week is how evil and aggressive his approach is and how he is to the right of most of the rest of the court. And and I have, yes, and I have yet to hear from any of his gay friends who, de who defended him publicly and did ads for him on television. Uh, about how they feel about the direction that he has gone in. Now, the other thing he did that we talked about last week was uh, making an assumption. We don't know this for sure because there are no names revealed on this, but the court did agree to take the Masterpiece Cake Shop case from Colorado about the Christian baker who didn't want to sell a cake to a uh, male couple. And uh, that lingered for so long on whether or not the court was going to take it that our assumption is that the arrival of Gorsuch finally gave them four votes to take the case, which is all they need. Uh, and we still don't know what Kennedy's going to do, but, you know, he did not rule with us in Hobby Lobby, right? Yeah, I, I think it's an open question, although if it took them this long to get four votes to take this case, uh, one would uh, hope that he's not uh, Well, they could also be waiting for a new it. justice to come on board. I mean, what, you know. Well, they could have taken it, though. With yeah. uh, uh, They could have had four votes. But uh, <laughs> this became the subject of, I, I hesitate to say anything like debate or conversation on The View last week because it was so egregiously stupid and a 
obnoxious yes. that, uh, you know, once again... It... Well, the baker brought on his lawyer, and uh, then and then the women were, were asking questions. But, I mean, Bad he, questions. I mean, uh, I, I, here's what I think it's going to turn on. It's going to turn on... Look, the baker kept saying the word, as you said, the word artistic. This is my artistic expression to emphasize that it's a First Amendment case. The He's thing is, trying he, to twist it into that. He sells wedding cakes. I mean, to me, that's a craft. Uh, you know, rather than r artistic expression. Uh, you know, if, if they asked him to festoon the cake with intertwined penises or something, I mean, just going, you know, off, he could say no. Uh, we would agree that he could say no. But if it's just the wedding cake, or and I'd like flowers, and oh, this or that, uh, he doesn't have the right to say, I say he doesn't have the right under the anti-discrimination law. Colorado just has an anti-discrimination law that covers sexual orientation. Just because it's a gay couple. And that's I, why he's lost at every level yeah, in Colorado. Do, does he ask everybody who comes in whether they line up with his religious beliefs in terms of the marriage they're trying to perform? But what was so disturbing to me was how ignorant these women were, mm. including lawyers on that uh, yes. show, on that panel, who were absolutely unable to understand that there is a non-discrimination law that it covers sexual orientation that therefore he was discriminating and they just gave him a pass and let him sit there and just repeat all this nonsense if the court rules with him on this i think we're in a situation where uh there are christians for instance who believe uh that interracial marriage is wrong bob jones university used to forbid interracial dating so there are christians who believe this it's wrong uh, it's against god's law uh then if an interracial couple comes in the baker will be able to say well you know i I just don't do this because I don't believe in this kind of a of a marriage. I will not make a cake for you. Uh, the the Pandora's box that gets opened is is frightening. Yes. Uh, the other legal story I have here is that uh, Liberty Council, the uh, right wing legal organization, one of our main foes, is suing GuideStar, which is an organization that evaluates charities and nonprofits. And in putting out their latest lists of nonprofits and analyzing them, they labeled some of them, including Liberty Council, uh, with the designation that the Southern Poverty Law Center is attached to them, which is that they are hate groups, specifically because of the way they talk about and treat gay people. Uh, and Liberty Council is suing uh, to calling it defamation or libel or something. So GuideStar ultimately removed the label uh, because they were getting so many threats to their staff mm -hmm. because these lovely Christians had been calling and making death threats to their staff and... Well, I mean, when, so they when Terrence it. McNally wrote a play about a gay Jesus character, basically, a character called Corpus Christi, uh, right here in New York, a theater uh, w closed down the production because they were getting death threats yep. from, the, from the religious right. Ultimately, they got so much pushback from the artistic community that they opened it. But uh, that was the end of the relationship between the Manhattan Theater Club and Terrence McNally. Um, uh, by the way, another another case we haven't commented upon is Olivia de Havilland's suit against the people who do feud. Yes. Uh, now she's 101, and she says, uh, "You had no right to portray me in this. You misused my. You defamed me." I don't think so. But she's a public figure, so yeah. presumably they have some license to do that. Although as a commercial enterprise, that may uh, play into it, but. Uh, it was stupid of them not to call her. Well, uh, why, you shouldn't. If, it is easier to uh, ask forgiveness than get permission. Uh, but I mean, if you you get into that, you give them the power. Don't you have the right to portray public figures? You in, do. In, you do. In fictional but accounts. But there are there are limits of what material you can use and how you can use it. And no. I, I don't know enough about the facts of the case. All it right. made me sad. Yeah. Well, she's 101, and she's asking for a hurry-up on this case. <laughs> uh, she was, right. no, don't forget, she, she was Melanie in Gone with the Wind in 1939. And many other wonderful yes, yes, yes. performances. Many films. Now, Nelson. the other legal case is uh, North Carolina. In this mm. case, the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. They have a law allowing magistrates not to perform uh, same-sex marriages. Presumably referring those marriages to other yes. people. And all the appeals courts said in this case, we're not ruling on the rights of same-sex couples, other things, but you don't have standing to challenge this. The people who brought the case weren't harmed enough 
to fight the state's use of taxpayer money to uh, uh, apply the law. Well, you know, that's uh, similar to the, uh, the what's the other case we did last week about standing and uh, There's a lot oh, of Mississippi yes. that the uh, people couldn't challenge because they hadn't been harmed yet. I, it, you can decide on the legality of a, a law or a situation without yes. having actual uh, harm right. of the kind they're trying to impose. Some other, some other yeah, news so from the states? Yeah, so let's, uh, uh, we heard a terrible story last week of, um, uh, you know, the, I don't watch the show Gotham, but uh, one of their main characters or actors is a guy named Donal Logue, and he has a trans daughter. As Donal on the left. left and and the his daughter Jade, 16 years old on the right, she has been missing for several weeks now. And he has been publicizing her her disappearance, and it's quite frightening. If you see her, call nine one one. Yeah. Uh, so we just want to help publicize that. We do. Yeah. All right. In the uh, Rhode Island legislature, they passed a bill protecting youth from conversion therapy. Yeah. Uh, getting good. on board there. Yeah. It's on the desk of the governor. Jean. In Utah. Uh, the, in Provo, Utah, they have an annual Freedom Festival uh, with a parade, and they have rejected the participation of a new LGBT community center, which wanted to have a float or a contingent or something in the parade, on the grounds that they are an advocacy group. This is an old charge that by being gay, you are automatically being politically uh, aggressive and and pushing an agenda yes the agenda is we are human beings uh, but uh, the community center actually said uh, okay we understand that I guess we'll just have to get to know our neighbors better in Provo yes uh, in Florida trans teen is suing the a Florida school district under title nine this is Drew Adams a 16 year old tune Teen who, uh, transgender boy who was forced to use restrooms inconsistent with his gender identity. So that's going forward. Uh, a couple of sad cases of uh, murders yes. in uh, Lynchburg, Virginia. A trans woman, Ebony Morgan, 28 years old, found shot dead. I think she's about the 15th. That's uh, what the, uh, f the 15th trans person of color this year who, yeah. uh, and there is an active investigation obviously into the murder, but there was some misgendering that went on oh, at the beginning of the case. And in Madison, Wisconsin, a uh, domestic violence murder, a uh, uh, 27-year-old man killed his lover, 52, at, stabbed him at home. There had been previous domestic violence calls. The uh, presumed murderer, alleged murderer, uh, had been described as bipolar, uh, often drunk. Uh, the disturbing thing here is that there were these previous incidents and yet uh, they remained living together and it ended uh, in a murder. Are you, are you done with uh, the um, police blotter? Yes. Uh, better news from Wisconsin, a school district there created a position to support LGBTQ youth in the Madison Metropolitan School District in their welcoming schools initiative we should have this in every school in the country. Uh, we want to honor uh, the life of Chuck Renslow. Yes. He died last week at 87. He was a giant. He, really? uh, he is What didn't he do? Well, he's probably <laughs> best known for creating the international Mr. Leather empire. He died at 87 years old, but he he owned bars, magazines, uh, created contests. He was a very philanthropic donor. He, and he, he was very involved in, in, the, in the nascent uh, gay political movement, in other words, in the, in the parties and pl gaining he's, political power for LGBT people. He used the money that he gained from these yes. enterprises. He but, served on the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force Board. Uh, he he had an amazing empire and was. And he founded the Prairie State Democratic Club in 1980. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, and he 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 held some party offices. Um, an amazing, amazing life. Uh, <clears throat> Tracy Bame of Windy City Times uh, wrote an eloquent and lengthy 
uh, obituary on Chuck. Uh, you can go to the Windy City Times website to read that. But well, we're going we're to show you something more personal about him, about the way he lived. But he had many partners over the year, uh, including um, Phil Andros, uh, uh, Sam St uh, Stewart, who was uh, wrote the you know um, the, who was he wrote a book about. Well, he didn't write the book, but a book was written about his many sexual exploits over the years. A very famous uh, character in the community. Uh, but he he talked about the way he lived with other men, and we're going to run that tape now for about a minute. It's not unusual in the leather community to have multiple relationships. I had one other lover, then two other lovers. At one time, there were five of us living together in the same house. It was home, I was just like anything else, I think. I cooked dinner every night because I was the cook, and if I walked out of the kitchen, they had to do the dishes and clean it. I wouldn't do that part. The most important thing is the trust, because without the trust, there's nothing. And it doesn't start that way. It has to develop, you know. You can't walk up to somebody and say, oh, you're cute, I trust you. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. But it does develop. And when it does develop, the lasting relationships are long. For instance, Dom and I, 43 years. People would stay with us for a while and then leave and, and, and go on. Sometimes we have people sleeping on the couches, <laughs> but they had nowhere to go. I'm a daddy. Somebody needs someone, come on, yeah, you know, stay at my place for a while. I consider them all family. They considered it also. Just because you're gay don't mean you can't be in a family. You know, you have to make your own division of family, bring your own people into it. And if everybody gets along and it's good camaraderie, it's family. It's a beautiful sentiment. Yes, and you know, when he, when he opened Gold Coast, the, his bar in 1958, it was believed to be the first leather bar in the United States. So he was quite a pioneer in that whole area. And the country of Colombia has just recently uh, sanctioned a relationship between three men and uh, defined them as a family legally for benefits or whatever. And why not? Yeah. They'll be quoting us. Um, <laughs> Uh, in New York City, you know, we believe in evolution, uh, that people can evolve on the issues, but, it, you know, it, it, uh, our mayor, uh, Bill de Blasio, doesn't have much opposition this year. His major Republican rival just dropped out. But there is going to be a Republican candidate. It looks like it's going to be Nicole Maliotakis. Uh, she is um, um, uh, r running uh, and likely to be the candidate and she says her biggest regret is voting against same-sex marriage in 2011. She in what, the state legislature? In the state legislature. She's an assemblywoman and uh, she marched in the pride parade. She's voted for some other gay bills but all right we, we might might you know move on from that because she supports well, her. Well we're still but, talking to Chuck Schumer. But the but she tried to give a reason why she voted against it and she said I thought the bill would have the unintended consequences of lawsuits against religious institutions that did not want to perform the marriages. So I would say not only are you a bigot, uh, Nicole, you're an idiot. No one has ever, no one's, there haven't been any such lawsuits anywhere in the country. And that is just bogus. And you need, if you can't think clearly about those issues, I mean, come up with a better reason. I, most of them should just admit, you know. Well, we've heard this reason for many years for many people, and it's always been nonsense. Uh, we do believe in freedom of religion in our yes. community and in this country. Of course. And uh, the fact that we get charged with that is just insane. And you remember the guy who sued Grinder because it was being used to uh, by his ex-boyfriend to send literally a thousand people to his door to have sex with him at his office and at his home which sounds pretty awful he sued grinder and uh, the, uh, a judge is going to decide on, on the case but uh, grinder says it can't be blamed because he got mixed up with a tech savvy judgment proof individual I mean it was awful for this guy yeah I don't know what makes him judgment proof but he seems to me to be the one who was the bad actor <laughs> but Grindr, the guy wants to but sue he complained Grindr. to Grinder many times about this oh, happens they, you have to do I something see. about this yeah, they and the guy, kicked him the guy off kept Grindr. adopting different identities and found a way to get beyond I that see. technology okay a little right. more complex. Uh, and uh, ESPN uh, publishes a magazine, and every year they publish a body issue in which they have a lot of athletes in nude but not revealing of uh, genitals uh, uh, pictures. And one of their covers this year is this guy. 
uh, who... Zeke Elliott. Zeke Elliott is a running back uh, in football. And I also had a women's cover, and it was ten, ten, Danish tennis champion Caroline Wozniacki. Which, now, Caroline Wozniacki got a lot of positive comments. We don't have her picture, sorry. <laughs> you can look it up. Uh, but the men freaking out at the picture of Zeke Elliott on the cover. The, yeah, I mean, uh, sp sports, the, the S stands for sports, not strippers. I don't need to see this before breakfast. What the hell? ESPN is straight garbage now. This is the way men react. The same ones who are drooling over Caroline. Uh, grow up. Yes. All right. Can All right. we move on to international news? And how, well, how about that Susie Orman, though, this week? Oh, I don't know. What's the story? Well, she, uh, she gave an interview, and she said, uh, look, stand up for what you want. Own the power to control your destiny. This is the key because I was proud of who I am. I was never discriminated against because I was gay. She had the nerve to say that. I mean, she was she wasn't always open. Uh, you know, it's it's. She it, complained for years about not being able to marry and the unequal benefit exactly, situation. Exactly. I and mean, we appreciate the fact that you're open and you're out there, but don't say you were never discriminated against. Come on. Yeah. All right. All right. On to Germany. Okay. Uh, so the German Parliament has uh, accepted, has voted for and approved same-sex marriage. Three hundred and ninety-three to two twenty-six. Now this came after Chancellor Angela Merkel uh, <laughs> said, "You know what? Let's just have a free vote in the Parliament, a conscience vote. People can do what they want. I'm still against it, but uh, I think it's okay to vote, especially since I had dinner with this lesbian couple and all their foster children. So I may vote against marriage, but I'm in favor of adoption." But she gave this interview. Really? She gave this interview thinking, "Well, they'll do this after the September elections. We'll do the <laughs> we'll do the conscience vote." But the other parties jumped on it and said, "No, we're voting now." <laughs> So they did vote, and and, uh, and she voted against she it. She voted against it, but but we won the vote. Now um, there is a, you know a, a possible constitutional challenge to this. Why? Because the con because people have gone to court and said we want to get married under the constitution and the constitutional rulings up until this, even though it doesn't mention man woman marriage have been, no, you're not entitled to this under the Constitution. But the question is, does the Constitution ban it? Well, you, uh, usually those decisions are about the court saying it's really up to the legislature to change it. And in this case, the legislature is changing it. Well, I don't know the whole history of it. I mean, that was the New York I experience. I thought one of the interesting sidelines to the, now by the way, Germany has had civil unions t since 2001. That's, yeah. a, that's a long time. Uh, and it was interesting to read that all six Muslim members of the parliament voted for the bill. Because That's they it. understand discrimination, unlike Susie Orman or <laughs> Nicole Malik, <laughs> yes. Uh, whatever. Yes, uh, but uh, Bavaria is apparently upset about this, so they may take some well, action. Well, they're the, you know, they're the, uh, I hesitate, no, I shouldn't say it. All right. Let's just say they're a very conservative part of the country. <laughs> yes, they are. All right, so in the United Kingdom, most of the United Kingdom has same-sex marriage, but not Northern Ireland. And there's been a fight over this for the last few years. And in fact, the uh, legislature in Northern Ireland voted narrowly for same-sex marriage, but it got blocked by the DUP party, which is the one now in league with the uh, Prime Minister May in England to uh, keep her to in power, keep her in power, and run the government. So, uh, so there was a. And then understand why they, they, this is allowed. They allow minority parties or minorities to veto things because it's a very fragile piece over there that they worked out, uh, you know, in, yeah. in the St. Andrews Accords. All right. So, but meanwhile, pressure has been building for legalization of same-sex marriage in Northern Ireland. Ireland did it last year. Uh, the rest of the United Kingdom has it. The Isle of Man has it, for heaven's sakes. So they had a huge pro-same-sex marriage march in Belfast, Northern Ireland this weekend. We have a picture of the crowd uh, that we can show. And we uh, oh, we have a picture of the Lord Mayor. Oh, okay, that's the, the crowd, crowd, crowd show. Big huge, rally, big hundreds rally. Hundreds of thousands of people, and it including, was, next picture. The Lord Mayor there on the right, right. with a uh, TV star. Yep. Um, now, um, 
Uh, Liam Neeson has also volunteered to be a leader of this campaign, is mm -hmm. putting himself behind it. Uh, you know, Liam played Oscar Wilde in, the, in, the, in a play, and his wife, Nat he and his wife Natasha, former late wife Natasha Richardson, very active in AIDS stuff. So he's he's in he's in this. They want to get this done. In other marriage news around the world, in Bermuda, the right wing wants to appeal the court's recent marriage ruling. Uh, legalizing same-sex marriage, but they may be too late, but they have submitted a request to be able to appeal even though they're past the deadline. They brought in thousands of petition signatures. We'll see whether the court lets them appeal. And staunchly Catholic Malta is moving on, you know, on uh, same-sex marriage rather fast. They have a, a, a prime minister now who said Malta wants to keep leading on LGBT issues and civil liberties <laughs> to serve as a model for the rest of the world. But, and and here's how far they've gone. I mean, some of the right-wing opposition there is objecting to want to retain the terms mother, father, husband, wife. No, 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 we're getting rid of all that, they're saying. So they're really moving. And by the way, they only introduced divorce into Malta in 2011. <laughs> Once they get on the train. And staunchly <laughs> Eastern European Armenia, have I got that right? Yes. Uh, the Justice Ministry says they they don't have same-sex marriage right. legalization, but they will recognize same-sex marriages performed elsewhere, yes. both between Armenian citizens, Armenian citizens, and other and foreign citizens, and foreign couples that have been married elsewhere. They'll recognize their marriage. This is how we got it in New York. Edie Windsor went to Canada. People went to Massachusetts and Connecticut, and they came back, and they were recognized by the state of New York. So that's what's happening in Armenia. Armenia, of all places. And in France, they now will allow assisted reproduction, you know, artificial insemination, uh, in vitro, whatever, uh, for same-sex couples and single women on an equal basis with heterosexual couples. And by the way, the, the German progress has raised hopes in Switzerland for moving on. So um, the, in uh, Serbia, the lawmakers there did elect um, uh, Anna, Anna Ber Bernabich. Ber Bernabic, I heard it uh, actually when Bernabich. I went online. Uh, yeah, I, well, that's the way I heard it online. I went and listened to people tomato, talk. Tomato, tomato. Whatever. She's the new prime minister. She's uh, openly lesbian. They voted 157 to 55 to approve it. Yeah, um, but there's some thought that she's just a stooge for a very right wing uh, president. So. And the, the, you know, using gay issues to mask, uh, you know, Governor Cuomo does a little bit in New York, you know, to mask some other con call it conservatism. Pink washing. Pink yes, washing. you could call it that. All right, so meanwhile, they held a big World Pride event in Madrid, Spain. They do these periodically. World Pride is going to be here in New York in 2019 in honor of the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Revolution. Uh, but this year, Madrid, uh, thousands and thousands of people had a big conference for a week. They had uh, marches, events, all sorts of things. They had Shep Wan in there, and he took some other <laughs> pictures for us. Let's put those up there. Uh, Shep sent us a picture of uh, World the, Pride in the subways. <laughs> I was wondering that was what that was, but it's a it's subway the staircase, staircase going down in the subways, and that's what the subways look like in Madrid. And this the next week. picture was of the Porta Sands are in rainbow <laughs> colors. Why didn't we think of that before? That's a way to go. <laughs> well, beautiful. Uh, a lot when of creativity in Madrid. Gilbert Baker didn't know what he was getting into when he. Well, actually, he did. <laughs> yes. He said this is going to spread everywhere, and it has. Yeah. All right, let's go to. Uh, well, in Singapore, they held the yes. annual Pink Dot rally. Now, that uh, the government has tried every year to crack down more and more on it. This year, they said no foreigners allowed, and they, they set up a perimeter of yeah. uh, fences and gates so they could check everybody's IDs. <laughs> Nonetheless, <laughs> thousands and thousands of people they in did Singapore. It because you said no. <laughs> and they weren't allowed to accept foreign money to run it, but they haven't been able to put a stop. What will they think of next year? <laughs> Outlawing the color pink? 
Well, I mean, you know, where there's this there's this story from China about how they're trying to crack down. I mean, we have made some progress in China, but they're cracking down on the internet. And uh, they want uh, all positive stories on the internet, positive stories about the government, no violence, no mention of drugs, no mention of extramarital sex, and no mention of homosexuality. Well, you know, maybe if we did that here, it would shut Trump down. <sighs> Uh, I'm just going to sigh. Uh, but a Chinese man did win a, a, a forced gay conversion therapy lawsuit over there in China, in central China. He sued a mental hospital over being forced to have uh, um, conversion therapy. So <laughs> it, he'd been sent to the mental hospital by his wife <laughs> and his relatives who said, you know, you got to stop uh, having uh, relationships with men. Yeah. Uh, he didn't want to go. So he has won a formal apology and $735 from the mental hospital. Right. That's now, a good thing. Now, and in Pakistan, yes. Pakistan has issued a gender neutral passport with an X for the gender designation to someone who identifies as non-binary. Here in the United States, that is not allowed. Well, we are fighting the State Department on behalf of someone who is asking the exact same thing. But Pakistan is allowing it. Oregon? But that's state by state. Yes. I'm talking about the federal government. The federal government Even of the Pakistan. Obama administration would not do it. Uh, in, in, in Indonesia, the leader of the second largest Muslim organization has called for a boycott of Starbucks because they're pro-gay. But oh, they can't get over themselves. But in East Timor, which was a very oppressed part of Indonesia, I mean, the, the genocide was committed against them, they held their first LGBT pride parade, and the prime minister there called for acceptance of gay people. I want to read his quote. Our president would not designate Pride Month yes. is June. The, the Prime Minister there said discrimination, disrespect, and abuse towards people because of their sexual orientation or gender identity does not provide any benefit to our nation. Can you imagine Donald Trump saying something like that? <sighs> no. I cannot. No, I cannot. This is uh, East I, Timor. I wanted to show you a picture of the Pride celebrations in East Timor, but when I looked around the internet, all I found was the Associated Press story that didn't have any pictures attached and the images uh, on the on the Google yes I wasn't sure whether they were current or generic I mean so. it was I, I should clarify it was part of Indonesia and now it's independent yeah and in Panama another uh, uh, national leader the first lady of Panama joined the pride march there I would welcome Melania to a pride march in... Uh... I would uh, welcome her to find out how we feel about her if she marched. This was uh, in Panama, it's Lorena Castillo de Varela. Uh, they were shouting, Lorena, Lorena, uh, as uh, well, she was up on... She sang also. She went up on the rally stage. She was quite vocal and uh, assertive about being part of the whole celebration. Uh, and frankly, you know, Hillary Clinton, I guess, has marched in uh, pride parades, but not when she was first lady. Uh, yes, she did, I think, because she was running for Senate oh, and yes, she was yes, first lady in 2000. That, yeah. Although I have to say, I went up to her group when she was march when she was marching and I see all these bright young faces and I said, how many of you are gay? <laughs> and uh, they all start looking at each other. <laughs> <laughs> like she just like put a word out on her volunteer list yeah. and she didn't really get a big gay group around her no no uh, in <laughs> in Turkey we told you and showed you pictures of people running from tear gas and cops last week yes. they shut down the pride parade for the f third time in a row so the following week uh, they there was an attempt to do a trans march pride march and the cops broke that up too and and banned it and right so there are bad parts of the world and uh, you know this Trump ban on uh, the Muslim well, ban uh, also includes a 120 day freeze on refugees of all kinds. So you've got all these gay refugees who Trump ex expressed such concern for. They're being thrown off buildings by ISIS. Mm -hmm. It's so disgusting. They can't get they can't leave their 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 horrible countries like Iraq or and they places get, like that. They get uh, partway to someplace like Istanbul where they are in the midst of a very homophobic uh, situation with the current government there. Right. But 
Istanbul used to be a much freer place for gay people, but when Erdogan came in three years ago uh, and collaborated with Mike Flynn and uh, others of the Trump ilk, it, suddenly it's a big right-wing shutdown. Well, Egypt did as well. I mean, yeah. there, were, there was an open, much more open gay life in Cairo and other cities uh, mm -hmm. before, and now there's a lot of, lot of crackdown because of the influence of the religious right. Do we have anything to say about this uh, Australian cardinal uh, who the Pope is close to, yeah, who has been well, accused he's been, of... Wait, wait cardinal George Pell is the finance minister, essentially, of the Vatican. He's the mm -hmm. number three guy in the Vatican. Mm -hmm. Pope Francis has kept him on for a long time, uh, or forever, uh, despite the fact that the, the controversy uh, uh, around his dealings as a priest and as a cardinal back in Australia protecting predators has gone on for decades, decades. And so he's finally, Cardinal Pell has finally been arrested. Yeah. And he says, I'm going to go back and face these charges. This Clear my name. This defamation of me. Well, this is the guy who's been defaming every single living gay person in the world with this, with the stuff he says about us. Mm -hmm. He's a big campaigner against gay rights. He's very butch, but apparently he is personally charged with sexual abuse and um, uh, covering it up for other priests. Mm. All right. So uh, we, uh, thus our discomfort with the Pope being given a lot of credit for yes. uh, being friendly. Well, or for wanting to clean up the abuse scandal yeah. and keeping this guy in power. Yeah. Um, uh, in, in, in Paraguay, the gay community is, uh, when they marched uh, in their, their pride march, they're demanding marriage equality there. It's spreading. Um, in Ottawa, there's a request for police officers to ditch their uniforms for the pride parade. Uh, this is it's, a controversy across the world now yeah. uh, around the uh, presence of police. I mean, uh, I think all kinds of things ought to be welcome. Uh, I understand certainly the concern about uh, about how police treat uh, uh, all communities, including our community. Uh, but um, you know, I wouldn't put everybody lump everybody together. Uh, in uh, what else? Well, let's go on to AIDS. Let's do. Uh, the AIDS Healthcare Foundation, speaking of controversial, of L.A., was exonerated in a suit brought by three ex-employees. They had charged that uh, the Healthcare Foundation was profiting by referring, uh, testing people and then referring them to care or treatment uh, to parts of their own organization. And the court said, uh, no, they're being perfectly appropriate in that and, and no big deal. Uh, the AIDS Healthcare Foundation is controversial in other ways, but they're out of it on the, that uh, The Gay USA show in New York has scheduled uh, uh, Dimitri Daskalakis, Dr. Dimitri Daskalakis, to come back as a guest. He is the... Uh, Next at, week. At the health department. Uh, He's is the, the deputy prevention. commissioner at the New York City Health Department. He used to be uh, uh, independent or and going into bathhouses and doing uh, prep info and, and prevention info. And he got hired by the health department and he's a top health official in New York City now. And he's uh, just a terrific smart guy who uh, is gonna bring us up to date on the epidemic and uh, other health issues uh, for the gay community. And I'm really looking forward to having him here yes, next week ne to talk to us. Next week. Uh, you probably saw that a lot of people were going to the U.S. Senate last week and getting arrested protesting the new latest bad health care law proposal. A lot of them were from the LGBTQ community, ACT UP members, Housing Works, Rise and Resist. Uh, all getting arrested at the U.S. Senate. And we temporarily stalled the bill. Uh, yeah. we're, we're, but uh, brace yourself for yeah. what they're going to be uh, throwing at don't us. Don't count on it being out. There's no. a lot of work left to do. And uh, I'm going to, again, recommend and maybe show you a clip down the road. Uh, uh, Memories of a Penitent Heart, July 31st on PBS. Uh, it's a woman who went searching for information about her uncle Miguel, a Cuban who died of HIV, and it wasn't talked about in the family because her mother, who was his sister, had rejected him. And she turned up his uh, ex-lover for after searching for two years. He turned out to be a priest currently. <laughs> and. Uh, 
He's got a lot to say. So there are a lot of home movies, documents, uh, new interviews, old stuff. It's really true. July 31st? Movie. Yes. Memories of a pennant. Where can we see it? Art. PBS okay. TV. Entertainment news? Yes. Uh, they're going to revive a Torch Song trilogy uh, at second stage in New York uh, this fall, and they've got Mercedes Rule as the mother and Michael Urie in, in the Harvey Firestein role, essentially. Yes, but the headline of the week in entertainment news is Jay Z's mother oh, yes. coming out. <laughs> yes, life is short and it's time to be free. Love who you love because life isn't guaranteed. That's Jay Z, right? Or well, the mother? The song is Smile. Yeah. Uh, it features knee. both Jay Z and. Uh, his mother discuss, discussing her sexuality. And it's the first time either of them has publicly addressed her sexual identity. This is his big hit new album, 444, in which he also apologizes to Beyonce for being unfaithful. But the, the song Smile is this duet with his mother talking about her sexuality. And he's very supportive and, uh, and uh, evolved. If you were hoping to hear anything from Edward Albee from Beyond the Grave, uh, forget about it. His will directs that all the things that he was working on uh, be destroyed, and he yeah. was working on some plays. Yeah. Uh, so we're not going to see that. But uh, I should say, all the money from his art collection, $9 million is going to go to his foundation. He was always about this, helping uh, young artists and everything, and mm -hmm. he's still doing that. Uh, by the way, uh, unpublished work, I mean, Tennessee Williams, they keep getting stuff out of the trunk, and it's <laughs> crap, and they keep producing it and say, oh, Tennessee Williams, Tennessee Williams. I'm sure that's why Albie, uh, one of the reasons Albie did not want his right. uh, unfinished work uh, shown. You may have seen television commercials for this new Olympic channel, uh, which is, I'm not sure whether it's going to be on the air or just online, but uh, it is on, going to be online at olympicchannel.com. And they're doing a five-part series profiling five trans athletes. Uh, it's, the series is called Identify. So if you go to olympicchannel.com, you can see the portraits of trans athletes. Uh, Ann and I are both very high on the play A Doll's House Part Two, and only until July 23rd can you see the original cast in, in, in their entirety. Laurie Metcalf, Chris Cooper, Condola Rashad, and Jane Howdyshell. Jane is staying on, but after July 23rd, they're bringing in the great Julie White to take the lead, and Stephen McKinley Henderson from Fences and many other plays uh, to play uh, her husband, uh, and uh, Aaron Wilhelm Me to play the uh, daughter. Well, if anyone had any... Jane Audi shall stay. Uh, I keep describing it as very funny and yes. as, uh, uh, you know, it's a lot of things, but one thing it is is uh, comedy and yes. funny, and Laurie Metcalf proves that, and Julie White proves that even more. It's smart yeah, and it's a funny, very smart which play. is a rare combination on Broadway, Yes, <laughs> and, let me tell you. And also smart is our friend Eileen Samoth's bandwidth, with bandwidth, yes. which we saw in a one night only performance a few uh, months ago at Dixon Place, and it was so good that they are including it in their LGBTQ Hot Festival yes. next week. July 11th. There's still a few tickets left. So Go to DixonPlace.org and you can read all about it about, and about the whole hot festival, actually. Yes, exactly. And see Eileen Samoth, uh, co-written by Barbara Rabb. But come back here next week for Dr. Dimitri Deskalakis, and we will see you then. Thanks thanks for, you. Yeah, thanks for joining us.